So Fear Street Part 1 actually took me by surprise and it ended up being a movie that I really enjoyed. Did Part 2 do the same? Well, let's talk about that. Greetings everyone! My name is Nightshade, this is The Night Shift, a home for all things spooky, and today we're going to be talking about Fear Street Part 2, 1978. Your boy got himself a fancy new mic for this, so that way we can cut out any isolated audio that I don't want. Maybe we'll do an ASMR one day, who knows. That's never gonna happen. <laughs> but enough messing around, it's time to review Fear Street Part 2, 1978. So after watching Part 1 and being pleasantly surprised with how good it was, I immediately wanted to go check out Part 2. Now, I wasn't watching these films like most other people waiting the week and then uh, waiting for the next episode to come out because they were already out because I had no interest in it for the longest time. But I checked this out and it was still surprisingly good. Not nearly as good as the first one was, but it was pretty good. And again, I'm reviewing this under the assumption that you guys have already watched this movie. So all spoilers are free game. This takes place in 1994 and they meet up with C. Berman. So C. Berman is the sole survivor of the Camp Nightwing Massacre. Not Jeff Probst's sole survivor, but the sole sur <laughs> But C. Berman is the sole survivor of the Camp Nightwing Massacre. C. Berman then proceeds to tell his story and that's when this whole movie turns into a flashback sequence. Hence why it's called 1978. This whole movie is done in the form of a flashback. So in this flashback, we end up learning a lot about the killers and the witch's curse. We find out in this movie that there's a cave system underneath the camp, and there's a big etched uh, satanic looking pattern known as the witch's mark that is engraved into the ground. And in that room, there are a bunch of names of people on the wall. All those names are shady siders that have flipped their shit and killed people. So it's in this film that we find out when somebody's name is written on the wall, they end up turning into a serial killer and killing as many people as they can. So in Fear Street Part 1, Ryan Torres started killing people because his name was written on the wall in the Witch's Mark room. And also in this cave there is a big black beating heart of darkness that is spewing out other killers once somebody bleeds on Sarah Fear's bones. So the reason all the killers in Part 1 were going after Sam is because she bled on Sarah Fear's bones. And I will say like right off the bat, this movie does feel like the most dirty derivative out of the entire franchise. You know, this one was emulating summer camp slashers such as like Sleepaway Camp and Friday the 13th, and it does that very well. However, it does it a little too well. Like this one feels like a straight up Friday the 13th film. Where, where part one felt like it was paying homage to Scream, it ended up doing its own thing. This one, however, feels like the Friday the 13th remake that we never got. But what this movie does well is it adds to the lore of the first film, so it really gets you hooked in to want to watch the third movie. But it is very much a middle movie of a franchise. Those oftentimes feel very safe if that makes any sense. Also, the way all three of these movies were filmed, they did part one first, and then they did part three, and then they finished it up with this film here, part two, and unfortunately, it kinda shows. And that's me really getting into the negative side of things, so let's, let's go ahead and break this down into two parts, and we'll start it off with what I liked. Because there are things in this movie that I like. Like, the setting is great, it really kinda harkens back to classic summer camp slasher films, almost a little too much, but it still brings me nostalgia because I used to watch a lot of those as a kid. Like, I grew up very much enjoying those movies, and like, I feel like they really captured the spirit of like the late 70s and early 80s. Like I feel like they really nailed the vibe in this one. Um, you know, I had complaints that the first one didn't really feel like the 90s, but this one really does feel like the 70s. Just from what I can tell, I wasn't alive in the 70s, but you know, it felt very 70s to me. And another thing that I really enjoyed about this movie was the story. Like, the story is the most important part of any film whatsoever. I feel like it unfolds a lot of lore naturally, and we get the answers to all the questions that we had in the first one. However, it does add a few more questions, but, you know, we get to that in part three, which we will cover next week. But yeah, the story is really fun, really enjoyable. It definitely takes, like, supernatural horror and slasher horror and kind of meshes them together like seamlessly. You know, the concept of the Heart of Darkness and the Witch's Curse 
Um, that's all fun. That's all a lot of fun. I think mixing two different subgenres of horror into one movie, that's, there's a lot of fun to be had with that, and there's a lot of fun to be had with this movie. And another thing that I really do enjoy about this movie is the cinematography is beautiful, much like it was in the first film, but it's all filmed by the same people, so everything really blends in together perfectly well. Also, another thing that I really enjoy is the soundtrack. It's like, the soundtrack has nothing but bangers on it. Like, track after track of nothing but bangers, and you know, I'm having a good time. But unfortunately, that is about the extent of all of the things that I like in this movie. There's a lot of things that I didn't like, there's a lot of negatives in this one. So let's go ahead and get started with the first negative for me, which is The Kills. Again, this was the last film filmed for this franchise, and it really, really shows, unfortunately. I hate to say it, I really do, but it very much shows here because there is not a whole lot of creativity whenever it comes to the kills. Like every single one of these is like axe strikes and that's about it. Like every single one of these kills is an axe swing and that's unfortunate but that's the majority of the kills. So yeah, the kills were kind of dookie in this. Um, they're not the worst kills that I've ever seen in a horror movie, but definitely not nearly as good as they were in the part one 1994 movie. And that's just kind of unfortunate, but I mean, it is what it is. So another thing I really didn't like about this movie, with the exception of Ziggy, uh, Sadie Singh's character, uh, Max from Stranger Things, um, with the exception of her, I really just don't like the cast of this movie. I, I find a lot of the people in this film to be really insufferable at times and it doesn't make for a very good viewing experience. Like Ziggy's character is really awesome, like I feel like she was me <laughs> as a fucking teenager but uh, other than that, like, everybody else just really kind of gets under my skin. Like, everybody in this film feels, like, a lot more generic and almost too much like slasher fodder rather than any good developed characters. I guess outside of Ziggy, uh, uh, Gary, uh, the, the kid from Halloween 2018 that gets, uh, shish kebab through the fence he was all right in this as well like he's the same character as he was in halloween 2018 um but outside of him and ziggy everybody else pretty much sucks in this movie uh, i would have to say unfortunately i don't really like hating on movies at all or hating on characters because you know this is something that somebody worked really hard on and it just really sucks when it doesn't pan out much like this one didn't really pan out, at least not for me. Another thing that I really don't like about this movie is the, the, the conveniences. Again, like part one had a lot of conveniences in it, but it wasn't too egregious to the point that I could just overlook that whole thing. But in this one, they practically have everything handed to them in this movie. You know, there's a sequence in this movie where they find out where Sarah Fear's hand is and it's next to a tree, which the tree is in the mall. You can see it in the opening scene of uh, part one. And I guess they built this mall around this tree for whatever reason that stands out is strange to me. But yeah, the first spot that they dig, they find the hand right away. And that really, really bugs me. And there's a lot of like little conveniences like that that really kind of get under my skin and make it hard to suspend my disbelief. That's gonna be another complaint that I have about this movie is the the amount of belief suspension that you have to do in order to enjoy this movie. Like, not only is it just the finding of Sarah Fear's hand in the mall by a tree first time, like, sure, okay. Like, Ziggy is quite literally stabbed to death stabbed to death. And all of the killers disappear and then all of a sudden Nick Good's there and he gives her some CPR and she survives. Like, thank you for breathing into my lungs, but how about more blood, please? Can't bring somebody back from the dead with CPR when they've quite literally been stabbed to death. Like, you're going to need stitches and some backup blood to put into said dead person's body in order to even have a chance of reviving them. And sure, I get it. It's just a movie. I understand that aspect of it but like you are asking me to reach pretty far in order to believe this movie like it's almost disrespectful to somebody's intelligence to ask them to believe this and speaking of disrespecting other people's intelligence there is a, a, a thing with Nick Good where they all make sure that you realize this is the same Nick Good the cop from the first movie uh, they don't respect your ability to put two and two together they have to 
hand it to you and not only hand it to you once it's several times and like it's throughout the entire movie where they're all like king of sunnyvale future police chief nick good like i could put two and two together man like Come on, I'm not dumb. I don't know, that whole thing just really rubbed me the wrong way. And this last little grievance I have is not really a grievance. It's somewhere in the middle between like and dislike, which I definitely probably should have put in between the like and the dislike camp, but fuck it, we're here now, we're doing it now. The thing that I really can't tell if I like or dislike is the Nightwing slasher himself. I've stated in the past that I really do not like the bag head killer. It really rubs me the wrong way. I don't like it. Although this one looks kind of decent for you know what it is which is a sackhead killer like they're sculpted in details in this one however it just it's still a sackhead killer at the end of the day it's just a sack on a head and a guy wearing a flannel jacket so it looks like there's some effort into it but there's no originality to it like yeah it's got a little sculpted in detail here and there but at the same time it's just a sack on somebody's head I don't know I don't, I don't know how I feel about this killer's design um, it's definitely not as good as any of the others. It is the bottom of the totem pole for me on that, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, with all of my grievances out of the way, like it's still worth the watch. It's still a decent movie, especially if you're watching these all back to back like I did. Like rarely are the middle chapters of any given trilogy any decent, but you know, this one, is not as bad as it could have been. So all in all, I'm definitely going to give this movie a 5.5 out of 10. Like a five and a half, not bad. It's still in the worth watching category in my book. Like if it's a three or lower, then I wouldn't recommend watching it, but it's a five and a half for me and uh, still worth the watch. So with all of that out of the way, I would like to hear your guys' opinions, your guys' ratings on this movie. Like what did you think of this film? Was it good? Did you like it? Did you hate it? It, let me know in the comments below now with all of that out of the way that's just about gonna do it for me uh, if you like the video let me know by leaving me a like comment down below uh, what franchise do you want to see me review next I'm I'm open to everything I will definitely be checking out the comments for stuff like that so I can get an idea of what you guys want to see on the channel so until next time my name is Nightshade this has been the Night Shift and I will see you in the next video stay spooky my friends